Thank you, the Chairman. Uh, I want to be clear. This is, this is the beginning of a series of, of hearings that I think are essential to figure out and get to the bottom of the truth of, of a situation that is, uh, thousands of Americans are facing uh, with their mission and their service in overseas. The Bureau of Overseas Buildings Operations' core mission is to place American officials located overseas into safe, secure facilities as fast as possible. I would note for the record that the State Department budget, overall State Department budget, since fiscal year 2008 has increased more than 58 percent, going from $17 billion to over, 20, to over $27 billion, and that security funding from fiscal year 2008 to fiscal year 2014 has increased more than 100 percent. Prior to 2011 and design excellence, the Bureau seemed to be fulfilling its core mission, constructing secure overseas facilities both quickly and effectively. Not only that, they were doing it on time and on budget. Yet in 2011, OBO decided to take this rare government success story and replace it. The new program focuses instead on constructing fancy buildings to enhance the U.S. reputation around the world, all the while many Americans are still waiting for their new secure facilities. Hailed as design excellence, the Bureau has subscribed to a view that fancy buildings equal successful diplomacy, that officials serving overseas and those whom they serve care first and foremost about aesthetics, and that aesthetics alone can further U.S. diplomatic relations. Since the Bureau initiated a major overhaul of its overseas construction program three years ago, embassy construction has slowed significantly, while construction costs have skyrocketed to millions over initial price tags. Long-awaited long facilities in less than secure cities have been delayed for years, while American officials overseas who devote their lives to furthering U.S. interest abroad must re remain in unsecure, dated structures awaiting state to construct safer facilities. Earlier this year, I traveled to Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, where I saw firsthand the ill effects of the Bureau's new design initiative. There I saw an embassy construction project that was originally slated to cost $50 million. Yet this has ballooned to a price tag of more than $200 million, all in the name of aesthetics. During my short visit, there was an attempted carjacking of an embassy staffer. This event, along with my conversations with foreign service officials stationed at Port Moresby, allowed me to see firsthand that having a fancy building is not high on their list of concerns. No one told me, quote, what we really need is a building that represents innovation, humanity, and openness, end quote, as design excellence purports. They wanted a facility that offered safety and security for themselves, their families, and many visitors. Why the Department allowing Foreign Service officials to remain in unsecured, dilapidated facilities at the price of aesthetics is beyond me. We had a chief of mission there who is trying to secure his people. They are in an old bank building. It is not secure. Those poor people, they work in an office. They have to have a, an armed guard take them from their living f facilities to the embassy itself, a, a facility that by any standard is not properly secure. In a May 2013 internal State Department panel on diplomatic security organization and management, which was chaired by former Under Secretary for Management Grant Green, issued its final report. The panel found no evidence of a court uh, of a business case or cost benefit analysis supporting design excellence. In short, the program has yet to produce results but introduces significant risks to constructing facilities on time, on budget, while moving officials overseas into secure facilities. Despite requesting, and, and to my ranking member and my, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, we cannot do the work on either side of this aisle unless we get the documents and operate from the same set of facts. We issued a letter the third week of, of July, uh, I'm sorry, third week of June asking for a series of things in preparation for this meeting. I have been working with the State Department for months. They have known that I have been curious about this. I have traveled overseas. I have visited a number of facilities. Yet despite that, we have not received a single document. I got one page that said, we will get this to you as soon as possible. And if you look at the document request to have nothing coming into this hearing is inexcusable. How can you provide us nothing? We don't have documents that Mr. Lynch or Mr. Welch or myself or, or Mr. Wahlberg can look at. How can you do that to the Congress? It's a waste of time and money and effort. And we'll bring you back. We'll do it again. 
But you cannot come to the United States Congress when we ask you for these basic documents and provide us nothing. Our staff worked with you and said, if you have problems with you know, one or two or three of the documents, whatever, just give us on a rolling basis what you have. And we got nothing. And I think on both sides of the aisle, that's a fair criticism. I hope my colleagues will, on the other side of the aisle, also plead that, uh, to help us with that. But a gentleman yield just for one second. Sure. The, the, I, I agree that, and I'm hoping, uh, Mr. Chaffetz, that the uh, witnesses will provide us with reasons as to why we have not gotten what we need. You're absolutely right. In order to do oversight, we have to have documents. And uh, so I, I, I yield back. And, and and I thank the gentleman. Let me give you an example. One of the documents we asked is this report on diplomatic security organization and management. It's on the Al Jazeera website, and yet our own State Department won't give it to us. So I printed it out on the Al Jazeera website. Why do I have to go to Al Jazeera to get the information that you have and that you're withholding from Congress? Okay. I'll yield back. 